good. Right, before I start, although you can see my name on there, I've forgotten, I always generally forget to put any contact details, etc. So I've got these, my um, cards that I normally use in, well, not internet, you know, networking. So they're there, and here, if anybody wants it for following, uh, free and everything, it's to follow the um, actual talk that I'm, um, can you put your hands up and I can give it, Folks can give it out for me, thank you. Um, if anybody wants one to follow it or to take away after. Okay, let me just get into mode. Any button to push, right? Okay, um, are you ready? You're not gonna like it. You're really not. Here, catch. Here, you ready? Catch. Ah. Oh. oh, sorry, I've forgotten the fan. I do apologize. You ready? <laughs> Come on, let's catch it. Let's not fail at it. Go! <laughs> no. Right? Oh, you nearly got one. Are you ready? Catch! Oh, come on, Thor! <laughs> come on, everybody! Now, what I'm trying to show is choice. Okay. Right, as you can see, that's what I do, that's who I am. Enabled archaeology, etc., etc. But I'm not just talking about enabled archaeology today. It didn't move. Space bar. Space bar, sorry. Right, what I'll cover is my personal failure, what choices we take, decisions, archaeology as a culture, failing attitudes towards some minorities in spoken words and actions, and archaeology's failure, culturally, can be a real success. Right, I have failed five times to gain a PhD candidacy. Why is that? I had good grades, but I was 0.2% off a distinction, 2% off a first in my undergrad. Um, so what it turns out, everybody who I've approached so far, so I can't even apply to those that, you know, first, you know, I need to accept first universities, so fine. Um, what I keep getting told is I'm too well known, I'm too contentious, I'm too crusader, I'm too much of an activist. And people don't want to be associated with that in archaeology, culture again. No one feels that they know enough about enabled archaeology to actually supervise me, which means that I've got no one and nowhere to go. So I failed. I have completely failed. But failure is a choice. You had a choice to pick that up. I have a choice to say to you, oh no, you didn't get a sweep. I failed you. Or... Uh -huh. Well, you caught a sweet, you might not have, but so what, at least somebody did. It's choice. Do we, in that split second, make it a positive or a failure, a negative? Do we learn or do we crash from it? Is it are we going to use it as a stepping stone? My brother stepped onto a stepping stone in Ethiopia. He was in the army and he died very recently. And he thought it was a stepping stone, but as soon as he stepped on it, it was a crocodile. And he had to zoom straight off it. But his choice was, that's a stepping stone. But he took that positively, not negatively. Which way will you choose? We can change it from an impossible negative that will go on forever in our lives, or you can change your mind and become positive. Identify the issues and obstacles, not problems, because in my view, they're not problems. I might not be able to get a PhD candidacy, but I can trial and look around and combat the issues that I find <coughs> and I'm finding ways apparently in America by PhD, by publication or by practice but I'm still hammering on that <laughs> um, because I still need to find a supervisor. Apparently I've nearly got enough published to do that. But it creates innovation for you. It, it, it's outside the box thinking instead of a plan A, make it a plan B or even a plan Z in the end. Because my future may or may not become reality. Now, going on to archaeological culture. There are three different... How do I go back? Sorry. Uh, back arrow. You can back use arrow. the arrows to go back. Sorry, arrow. forgive me. So right, I thought the, the I'd other. missed one. Yeah, that sounds funny. Right, so it's my decision to be positive rather than negative about my failure, in inverted commas. Okay, in our... 
in cultural failings, I mean, we're so very good at listening to stakeholders, we are, but we ignore some minorities, including disabilities, LGBT. There are minority in practice who oppose equal diversity, integration, inclusion, and participation. The 10% as I call them. Examples in groups I'm going to cover is disability, LGBT, and employment. So that in disabilities, people see somebody without a leg and go, leg, no leg, not PhD, 25 years experience and trench and they can, because that's culture, that's the society we live in, that's what happens first. But, as Cross said in 1995 in a TAG conference, we view people with disabilities as separate, apart, not us, not belonging to you which I do, which we all do who are a noble archaeologist, all 600 of us in this country. And, but Cross said, it's not us, we are viewed as a part, but we can become one and we are one if we stop viewing the gap between that you're disabled and I'm not. And before 1995, disabilities were completely ignored um, and forgotten about, people were unaware, if there was any mention it was always the medical model of disability basically stating it's your fault that you're ill um, and you've got to come up to the pretense of being as, you know, two arms, two legs, etc. People also are unaware within archaeology that anything is happening in this area. Um, there's fear and suspicion, especially amongst employers, to employ anybody who's got mental health problems, in my view, issues, um, but it's by becoming familiar that things change. Since 2000, there have been many, many studies outside of archaeology stating that if one disability, just one, and it could be mental health, it doesn't matter what it is, if people become familiar in their <coughs> own experience of a person, any person with disability, the whole view changes, whoops, the whole view changes to favourable for all disabilities. In word and deed, now we keep looking for jobs, all of us, and in the LGBT community, I was at CIFA earlier this year, and um, I was talking to somebody who is gay, who is a head of a department of an archaeology department at a university in this country, and he told me, you know, since he became the head of that, he's had more jibes, his partner has ended up in hospital, because of the violence shown to him because he's gay. Now, whether or not that's to do with the department, don't ask me, but I do know that it was also jibes from his colleagues, etc., etc. So a minority do assault and fight. I'm not talking about physical. It's mainly verbal. It's mainly cultural not accept or not ask down the pub because you know that that person only says one in ten. So there's that and also the jobs on record, and this is on record, um, in, in the country, LGBT isn't mentioned, but there's only 1%, 1% actually recorded of people who are LGBT actually being employed in the UK um, for archaeology. With disability, it's just under 2%. I don't know if you know the national average. The employment rate is around 80 odd percent generally, and it's 30% for disabled people to be employed, which is still appalling anyway, that's a 50%, but look at us, failing. But we can change this, a whole tool's lived experience basically is for the different publics, I'm a public archaeologist mainly, and what that says is it's by the lived experience that you have right now that you'll remember that and then you'll go through, okay, you'll go through, <coughs> enjoy yourself, whatever, and that's how the publics get attracted to archaeology, etc. And what I'm saying is that if we address all sectors of archaeology and listen to each other, that we need to listen to each other, which we don't. I'm not talking about everybody, I'm talking about a minority, but it, it's the fabric, the structure of our cultural society. Then if we can go outside the box and become familiar with LGBT, with disability, with many other minority groups, and I argue I suspect, I can't prove, that 80% of archaeologists in some form or other are disabled. 
Um, once, anyway, people become familiar with all these different groups, they become more favourable and it will come towards equality. Success can be achieved. If you look at archaeological employers, some wouldn't touch anybody who's, um, well, certainly disabled. I can't talk really about LGBT in that area because they think they won't be able to cope with. But I'm asking and suggest, well, no, I'm saying that if we employ and see exactly, even if it's a tryout for one day, then you can see that person working and you see if they're crap or good, just like you would anybody else in an interview, but give them an interview. And also then will be seen from the social model of disability, which means that it's society's fault, not you, society in general's fault that somebody's disabled. And if we're seen in that mode, you will see our abilities, not our disabilities. But LGBT, we are all the same. We are the same. It doesn't matter who we love, who we care about, who we hate. But that could bring cultural acceptance and equality. One day, as I said here, will be a memory to some people. Once we're gone, we're dead. But that memory will live on. So through whole torso lived experience ideals and um, views, I suggest I'm saying that um, acceptance and cultural, even though it's going to take 20, 25 years within my research to change, it will change. But will you help us? help all people just to accept and be open when they see discrimination against LGBT, disabled, etc. to actually say, hey, that's wrong. Might be laughed at. I've been called a freak. I've been called things you wouldn't even want to know. But the fact is, I don't care. Because when you love archaeology, you are asking for acceptance and equality as a person as well as an archaeologist. So, what do I say? failure to success. Value yourself. You have self-coping um, strategies um, that can really work. Sorry, I'm just saying, no, I haven't lost one. Um, that's a bit strange. Value the difference through this lived experience of each minority group to be accepted, to be listened to and not ignored. Familiarity in any area brings acceptance. Changing culture to an awareness then acceptance. This is very strange. I've lost a... Sorry about this. I've lost a... Somehow I've lost a... a file. I've nearly finished. Uh, but there was a... I'll get there. I'll get there. It is. That's me. That's the way I excavate. I don't kneel down. I don't get my trowel out and do it the right way. I know many others that go flat on their stomachs with no legs. Other people with no arms and legs dying. I could go on forever. We've got different ways, but the thing is, we can produce results. I'm not saying I'm any good or if I am good. But what I am saying is that you look around the vast arena and we're looking at over a thousand at least. And I can't prove it because there are no statistics. It's from my research of people who would like to be in archaeology, even though they're trained, etc., etc., but they're not accepted. They're thrown in the bin. Don't we can change this failure to success and really be, because we are so forward thinking, we do listen to our stakeholders. Let's listen to everybody, accept everybody and give us all a chance. Thank you.